How do you do everybody? I am Brad with Big Family Homestead and today's video, I've got to talk to you about rock stars, faith, and the Zen art of being made prepared. So let's get to it. Okay, folks, now here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and give you a disclaimer and a 30 second warning. And the reason for that is this. I, um, I'm going to basically try to adopt uh, at least once in a while the, um, uh, the habit of going ahead and sharing with you stuff that's on my heart. And why I'm giving you this 30 second warning is because we will, will be talking about opinions, namely my opinion, and then hopefully you'll be able to comment and uh, share your opinions uh, what on whatever I'm chatting about. But the other thing is this, is that we will deal with stuff like spirituality and um, my faith. So I wanted to give you the old 30 second warning. So if that's not your thing, I do not want to be the kind of person that crams stuff down people's throat. And I don't want to be the kind of person that uh, makes you feel like if it's, if it's not my way, it's the highway. I want you to understand that these are my opinions and my faith journey and, and the journey of, of my family. Uh, so here you go, last chance to click away um, because here we go, this is what we're gonna talk about today, you ready? Rock stars, faith, and the Zen art of being made prepared. Okay, so there you go, you had your chance, you could have left. Here's the scoop, folks. In, in uh, my former life, uh, you know, a few years back, um, I basically, I have been in the Christian rock ministry, like music ministry, and I've had the blessing of being on some record labels and touring and having some hits and all that kind of stuff in a band that was a ministry band. Our, our goal was 100% to go to a place and share the love of God with kids who are straight up hurting. And so we did that for many, many years. And I got to tell you this story before I get to my point. So here's the scoop. What had happened before we actually got our first record deal, we were starting to gain some popularity playing bigger shows uh, and bigger gigs and, and starting to get known. That's a huge deal. Well, we got approached by a big ministry called, called Acquire the Fire, which uh, for those of you who may not have ever heard of it, it's, it's a youth ministry where they would travel from city to city and they would uh, go into large arenas and there would there'd be events for kids, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 kids all in one shot. And they would have some big national bands and then they'd have some medium bands, regional bands, and there'd be speakers and all that kind of stuff and it would be a life changing event for a lot of the kids there. Well, here's the scoop. We already had our schedule mapped out. Now, um, what do I, what I mean by that? Well, whenever you're in a band, you don't, you don't book stuff for next week because people don't necessarily need a band next week. They don't plan their events that, that short, they plan them way out. So we were booked at this one place in podunk little nowhere, Alabama, and I will not mention who you are. That's yeah, funny. Um, but basically, uh, we, we had this gig that was on our books, and then we got contacted by the people from Acquire the Fire saying, we love your band, we want you to come out. And we're like, hallelujah! Because if you get on a gig like Acquire the Fire, first things first, is you're sure to make a lot of money. <laughs> I know that's gonna sound shallow, but we were poor, 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 could barely afford the vans that kept breaking down to get us from gig to gig. So the money was a very, very attractive idea. Secondly, and, and ultimately more important, I'm trying to be silly, but more important was the fact that you're dealing with ministry on a national level now. So that was, that was huge. And then thirdly, if you're on one of these large events and they like you, then you're a shoe in. They keep they keep you coming back to the different events. If you if you work for them and uh, the the kids like you and th it's just great because then it's like a built in series of big big gigs and um, also 
they um, uh, if if you're if you make it so to speak at an acquire the fire style, you know, a few different uh, bigger venues, then your chances of getting a record deal go skyrocketing because you're selling a lot, you're in front of a lot of people, free publicity, all that kind of stuff. Well. We had a gig on the books, like I said, Podunk Nowhere in Alabama. Well, we, we were like, oh no, 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 no. We cannot give up this Acquire the Fire gig. We just can't. And, and it, it'll define our, it'll get us going in a way that would be like a matched gasoline, right? Well, so what we did uh, was we contacted the um, uh, the gig, the venue, and we talked to the person in charge and and just said, hey, look, we have had this opportunity. Will you please, please allow us to change the date? And they said, no, can do, can't do it. This is when our event is, and that's that. Uh, and then we we're like, oh, no, come on, please, Lord, please. So we called them later you know we thought okay well maybe we'll, what what if we just offered to play the gig for free if they just reschedule get a local band or something if they'll just reschedule we won't charge them anything at all and they wouldn't let us off the hook there so we're like getting desperate now we can we can see oh the golden ring it's fading it's going away Choir the fire please <laughs> anyway so we decided well what if we offer the guy two free gigs surely surely they would take that because by then the second time comes around we're on the radio it's going to be a big big event for them and they wouldn't let us off the hook well now i'm not saying this to be nasty to anybody else but i'm going to say this just because it's kind of well it's true most of the bands that we would deal with um, that we knew that we were uh, uh, contemporaries with, so to speak, their managers or they would have just basically canceled on the Podunk show. They would have basically just said, no, we don't care. You can talk about us all you like. Um, we'll mail you back your deposit, and that's that. And um, we felt very, very strongly that that would be absolutely not an option. We had given our word. We tried to get out of it. They wouldn't let us out of it. So we were going to go to this stupid gig. And, and we, we, we just made it up on our mind. This is going to be horrible and blah, 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 blah. You know, woe is me. Pew, 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 whips, and, you know. So we went to this show. We played this show. And I kid you not when I tell you, okay, this was a very small venue. Imagine, if you will, mm, stroll with me in your brain cavity. Um, it was kind of like maybe the, the town might have had maybe 5,000 people in it, uh, really small. Uh, and, and the venue that we were in was kind of like a... Um, an industrial park, you know, the big metal long buildings, and then there's several businesses in them. Well, they had um, converted a business that I believe was a feed business um, into this ministry place that they had. And why do I, why am I pretty sure that it was a feed place? Well, because there was bales of hay everywhere, and um, there was chicken wire <laughs> separating walls and different kinds of things like that. And we went there and, and, I'm, I am embarrassed to say right now, it, but it is true, we had, we had a bad attitude. And we went there, and, and this, this gig was everything that we had feared. We were like, man, this stinks. Everything was just bad. There were very few kids. There was like 50 kids there. And um, it was just, we, didn't, we barely made enough money to get to there and then back to our home gas-wise and all that kind of stuff. It was everything that we had feared. And we drove back home and we had a bad attitude. Now, this is where the story starts to get really, really crazy. So, um, we just thought, this is over, we're done with. Man, I'm just glad that's over, right? Well, a couple weeks later, we got a phone call from the person, the ministry head, the youth pastor, or I don't think it was a youth pastor, but the guy who was running the ministry there. He gave us a call and he said, hey, um, by the way, um, thank you guys for honoring your word and doing the show, even though uh, we realize that it probably um, 
could have affected you negatively. It was just, it meant so much to the kids and they really, really wanted you there. And then they shared this with us that blew my brain. And it was this, that they, that the pastor guy said, Hey, by the way, this is really, really cool. Uh, he said, you know, there was a young lady there, 14 year old girl who was at your show. And, uh, he wanted to share that. Um, let's see, how do I put this? Well, we, we, in our ministry, we talk a lot about God as a father and um, that, that he is interested in intimately getting into your life and picking you up like a dad and loving on you. And he's, he's always right there. And um, this young lady pretty much said that she had never, ever, ever in her life that she could remember thought of God as a father being a good thing until that night and that she heard that message from us and 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 furthermore though that that she never thought that god being a father type would ever be good and the reason why is because um her father for the past four years had been sexually uh molesting her <sighs> bam well this youth pastor guy had shared with us that um she uh, was getting help. Um, she was now in a healthy situation. And um, our concert that night was the catalyst that started this chain of events that ended up getting this girl the healing, uh, or at least the beginning of the healing that she so desperately needed in this relationship with this loving God who desperately wants her. And um, so... We were thinking about that for a long, 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 long time. And we just had, it was like, okay, God, I'm sorry. We had a bad attitude. We will try to go with your plan instead of worrying about what's going on for us. And you know what? It made an amazingly huge difference. When we, when we got our head right, Instead of going, man, this is going to be a crappy gig and we're going to blah, 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 blah. You see, it was bad all the way around. God just said, you know, hold on, just wait. I have something bigger than you could ever imagine. This is going to impact your life and the lives of this young lady. And who knows how many other people, just because God said, hold on, I'm going to take this situation and let me do this. I want you to participate with me. I want you guys to be there with me. But watch what I can do. You think Acquire the Fire is cool? Let me show you something that is going to change lives now. That blew our brains so heavily when we just realized, you know, man, if, if we had done the Acquire the Fire thing, if we, if we had waffled, and we just said, oh, I'm sorry, we can't play the gig. That poor girl may be in that situation still. She may be dead. Who knows? And here's the point that I'm going to get at, guys. This, this is it. This is it. The preparedness part. We got the rock stars. We got faith. Here's the preparedness part. Now, we had no idea that God was doing anything at that point. But he was preparing us. He was making us ready. And, and when he revealed the blessing that, that this young lady had been redeemed, that this young lady now was healthy and that she has a solid relationship with Jesus and that we were used in that process, holy smokes. And that occurrence, that, that happening was the beginning of us being prepared for more and more and more ministries and more people's lives being touched. And when we got it in our heads that this is not about the biggest show, you know, because the thing is this, is that every band wants to be in front of the biggest crowd you can be in front of to get your message out there. For us, it was always about ministry, but we always just thought, well, the more people we can get in front of, the more ministry we can get done. And I'm here to tell you that God shook us up just a little bit and said, hey, you know, you were probably in front of, you know, 30 to 50 kids, but I just changed some serious, serious lives in there. Don't worry about the numbers. Let me do that. God's math is different than our math. 
And here's the thing. He had been preparing us to, to, to deal with more and more different situations that, that people's lives were being changed. And here's my challenge to you. I don't care what you're into in life, whether you're you know, a homesteader or whether you're a homeschool mom, if you're a prepper, if you're an electrician, welder, rock star, whatever. All the stuff that's been happening in your lives up to this point, you can look at them as just occurrences and things that happen, or you can look at them as being prepared for the next step. And, and I've got one more thing that I want to share with you, and we're going to call it a day. Hopefully you're still with me, and hopefully you're not you know, throwing rocks at your computer because I don't really have insurance policy for that. But anyway, um, here's the other thing. In my personal life, separate from the band, well, no, including the band, actually, I have had several occasions in my life when um, all of a sudden I get a wild burr to do something, whether it's... Um, Video editing. When I when I first l learned how to do video editing, it was kind of like, huh, I wonder what would that be like? And, and God was giving me the desire to go and learn video editing. Well, little did I know that three years later, my family's income was going to depend on my skills video editing. And he gave me a job in the video editing field. Well, that happened before with guitar. I didn't know that I was going to end up being in a, in, a, in a band on a record label and touring and all that kind of stuff. And it's happened a few other times with different things where all of this stuff that we're being made ready, that you're being prepared for what's next. And right now, this is very interesting because we have not been interested in homesteading or preparing or, or um, growing things or bees or goats or rabbits or any of the number of things that we're into now until about five years ago. And God was like, hey, check this out. You should look up honeybees. And I got interested. And, um, and then it was like ravenous. That's like, oh, I want to learn gardening and I want to learn this and I want to learn that. And I truly, truly believe that he's preparing us for the next step. Now, what that is, who knows? There are people that think any number of calamities is right around the corner. And while we are preparing for whatever, we're, we're really of the mentality just that, you know, we need to be as self-sufficient as we can because if something did happen, people of faith are going to be in a small, small, small minority. And we're going to be the ones that are going to have to go ahead and say, all right, folks, I can help. I can show you how to do this. Let's do this together. You don't know how to garden? Let me show you how to garden. Hopefully, my rose-colored glasses... Uh, <laughs> uh, well, let's just say it this way. You're needed. I'm needed. So, anyway, I hope you um, have enjoyed the little talk right here, right now. M my, my overarching point is just this, that we don't know who it is that we're affecting, but we should doggone be paying attention. We had the blessing of finding out that we had been a huge blessing. We didn't know. We had a bad attitude about it, but God had been preparing us for the next step. And maybe he's preparing you. Maybe the reason why you know how to can is because someday you're going to have to help somebody else. Maybe the reason why you're good at gardening is because someday you may, excuse me, may, may need to feed your neighbors. Hopefully, 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 we can draw near to God and draw near to others and we can be part of what's awesome in this world. I am Brad with Big Family Homestead. Please pass this around. Uh, hopefully some other people might uh, enjoy it. Like, subscribe, you know, whole, whole nine yards. So anyway, you have an amazing day.